What is chat even? Chat is talking about Hawaiian punch. Wow, I should talk about more positive things. Apparently people are like compensating for the fact that I'm just talking like weird, dirty gossip about stuff. But like the weird thing and kind of like the culmination of like why I'm even telling the story. I don't even, well, I guess I mostly told it just kind of, uh, okay, good, clump of moss. I mostly told it as a result of like me talking about men on the internet treating women differently. I don't even know. Um, but the weird culmination is like, even to this day, I will hear on the vine from like somebody that still knows these people and still interacts with them that anytime any of the like stallions of old meet her, they're like trying to woo her again. And it's just the weirdest thing ever that somebody is willing to like go that far for somebody. It's like, it's almost endearing if it weren't terribly creepy. And extremely misogynistic as well. Let's see. I don't know. Uh, I guess I might as well talk. So, uh, the the friend that I thought was a friend that wasn't really a friend that was asking me for help as far as like dealing with this girl, I might as well talk about him. This is going to be negative. There's not a whole lot of funny in result as uh, like as a result of him, but I might as well just talk about it anyway. Because like I said, one-sided friendships. Technically, I did use him because he had a car. He had a nice car. He had very nice music, too. But for the most part, the dude saw friendships as nothing apart from a way of affirming his own greatness, which was weird. Um, I never... I guess I guess I had dealt, dealt with people like that before, where it's like, okay, somebody that really is so self-absorbed that they can't really see, like, other people or be interested in other people's hobbies, interests, whatever. Uh, I... I generally, like, at least there's some kind of common ground, but with this guy, it was either him, or he'd just kind of lose interest and stop talking to you. Which, again, as as a freshman who, like, wanted friends, and, uh, yeah, that, that's a different topic. Um, But so, like, as a freshman that wanted friends, it's like, alright, you know, we hang out, we watch TV, movies sometimes, listen to music, uh, make jokes, uh, I don't know, make do pranks and stuff this is what friendship is right oh i'm not susceptible to knockback i just realized this all right thorax is taking the lead as far as like favorite character status i should leave um but let's see um yeah th this is wander vent time and i don't know it happens uh tell me if you want me to tell tell something positive and i'll try and talk about positive stuff there's a lot of positive stuff i can talk about too but it's just kind of like, for frame of reference for previous story, I don't even know. It's, it's just kind of... I, I guess I will say, just as an aside before I continue with this guy. Um, I don't know about you, but I like am weirdly addicted to reading about other people's relationship problems in life. I don't know if this makes me like a 70-year-old woman, 70-year-old grandmother. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I will like... Uh, so... Shell also likes doing the same thing. So she has a site called like Wedding Bee where she will, holy shit, we are just like showering people in saw blades. Large ones too. How many clumps of iron do I have? Four. How many um, scatter shots do I have? Two. Why does it feel like I'm showering enemies in more saw blades this time around than last? I don't even know. Um, okay. Oh. Let's see. People want me to tell a D&D &D story. Um, okay. I'll look into think about D, D as I go along here. Um, mm. But, so as far as this guy goes, just to kind of finish talking about him, because it's kind of short, but it was just kind of interesting. I, I guess this is, uh, somebody had asked me, is like, you know, should I go to college? Should I not go to college? I think college was useful in a lot of ways. And I think the easiest way is just learning how people work, how adults work, because like kids are predictable, mostly. You can kind of tell what a kid wants usually just some kind of self-gratification and you can kind of work it in and if it's both beneficial to you you're all good but adults a little bit more complicated a little bit more childish weirdly enough like i've had adults just act way less mature than kids just on a night constant basis it's strange um but so this guy eventually i kind of realized that you know what he really doesn't care about like anything he didn't even care about school which Go figure, college. 
Uh, once you really figure out what you want to do in life, and if it doesn't quite align with what you're doing in school, eh, it's generally not, like, super necessary. But so this guy would, um, th this guy would go on, like, extended co-ops, to the point where I was actually a, a higher level student than he was, which pissed him off to no end. I, I think, I'm not gonna say that was the beginning of the end, but it, it was kind of where I started seeing the writing on the wall, because he could not handle the fact that I got to register for classes before he ever did. And I, I could not believe that somebody uh, older than me, as like a student or anything like that, that had made the decision to, you know, effectively not attend school in favor of, um, in, in favor of, you know, just making more money, uh, would get pissed about being outranked by somebody that stayed in school. Uh, but it was interesting and weird. Um, but, so he also, kind of like the stalker guy, actually... If this guy were creepier looking, I think he would have fit right in with uh, my ex-girlfriend's stalker slash now slash then boyfriend. I don't know. I haven't checked in a while. Probably should have checked in between episodes. It's just so it's like, oh, hey, status update. Uh, but you know what? Who cares? Um, uh, let's see. Let's just go before we die. Um... But so eventually I just kind of realized that this guy does not care unless it's like benefits him specifically. It's like, all right, this is a weirdly depressing thing to think about as a uh, as a college student. I mean, go figure. College students probably have I, like a lot of people say high school is like hard from like an emotional standpoint. And I think like college can be harder. Like college can be really rough on people just as like an all round thing. But maybe it's just because I had like I'm not even going to say a rougher time than most. I had a weirder... Oh, I, I know stories I can tell. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't, like, D&D related. I don't think I've even mentioned my roommates. Um, at least not that much. Alright. Um, but so, eventually it kind of culminates in me realizing that this guy really doesn't care about anybody apart from himself. And it's like, alright, you know, look out for numero uno. I can kind of respect that, but at the same time, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me, like, 30 times more. All right, it's my fucking fault. Um, and, like, it was never anything particularly negative. But, so, I mentioned this... God, I don't actually remember when I mentioned this. Um, but, so, the easiest way to actually make me no longer be interested in you as a person is if you drive poorly. Uh, weirdly enough. Uh, or if you're, like, super racist and stuff. Or a bigot. The list goes on and on. But, drive poorly with me in the car, and I'm generally going to avoid talking to you. Just because I don't want to be put into a position where I'm riding in a car with you or whatever. Because I truly can't deal with poor driving. Uh, so, right before going to college. I mean, like, a week or two before going to college. You know, all ready to go. Uh, even packed and stuff. Dri driving around. Uh, uh, driving back from... Uh, one of my ex-girlfriend's house at the time and uh it was like a blind corner and like i i'm telling this slowly not specifically because it was like super traumatic even though like it kind i don't know i'm not gonna say it was like super traumatic so much as like it was freaky and i still have like issues with it um but so blind corner uh oh shoot there's a there's a heart of ah whatever no big deal um, but so, it was a blind corner, I turn it, uh, thinking nobody's there, suddenly I'm, like, lurching across, uh, across the street, and, like, my car is not handling well, and I, like, am super dazed. Uh, effectively, I wasn't, I was shell-shocked, I, I was not concussed, I didn't hit my head on anything, but the whiplash was enough to, like, really knock me out of it. Seriously, head-on collisions, not fun, wear your seatbelts. I know they're uncomfortable, but seriously, wear them. Um, but so I'm concussed, and my car is effectively totaled. Uh, front end is not gone, but it is a mess. Um, and, like, leaking fluid and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, it gets sorted. I eventually get my wits back about me. But ever since this specific incident, because I've, I've been in three car accidents now. Uh, one was my fault. Uh, that one was my fault. One was because, uh, the lady behind us would not stop texting, and just slammed straight back into us. And the last one was when the dump truck decided that uh, we were going when we weren't going. Which was partly my fault because I had stopped shell because I thought we had a stop sign. Turned out we didn't. Um, 
but I'm not going to claim that one just because it was not my foot on the pedal there. But anyway, uh, we were taking some damage. We need some healing abilities here. I think I have a mossy clump. I think I have a couple of them. I got one. I could use more. Looks like we got... Oh, I thought we had a health back over here. Either we got it or it's just already gone. Um, but so, ever since then, anytime I'm, like, in a vehicle and somebody slams on the brake particularly hard, it's, um, I, like, freak out. Uh, and actually, if I know somebody is, like, driving kind of erratically, it will actually get, like, super obvious that I'm, like, not okay with this because I'll actually be, uh, I, I will be phantom driving. I will specifically be phantom braking. I will phantom brake no matter who's driving. Even if it is a safe driver that I trust, if I feel like we're not stopping fast enough, I'm putting my foot down as though I had a pedal as well. I would be a very bad driving instructor. Uh, assuming that I have one of those like crazy pedal things that lets you uh, stop the car, even though you're technically not driving. Um, but so, uh, you know, friend that's not really a friend anymore... He liked to go fast. He liked to drift. And so, uh, I, I, we were driving around in the winter. Dude was drifting. I'm like, dude, can you stop? And he's like, no. Just flat out said no and starts drifting harder. And it's like, all right. And the problem was, everybody in his car, because we had just come back from, um, it was two couples in his car. None of us liked his driving. So it's like, after a certain point, everybody was shouting at him. It's like, all right. You know, pure pressure wins the day. Because the one, the one thing... I, you know what? I think the guy was narcissistic. Yeah, he probably had some kind of baseline narcissistic person. Okay, teleporting worm. Um, narcissistic personality disorder. I'm, I'm probably, you know, armchair diagnosing this guy a little bit too hard. But it kind of matches up when I think about it. Um, but so, he would not do something in like a one-on-one -on -one basis. Because he knew, he knew he could just get out of it. But if he was wildly outnumbered as far as like an an opinion or like an anything went he would he would kowtow to the popular belief he was uh, he was kind of a tool in a way uh, in that way where it's like all right you know so if, if you have more people at numbering him opinion wise then he will he will back down on it uh so that time when he was drifting and nobody wanted him to eventually you know having four people yelling at him stop drifting uh, and mind you this is like we had just seen a cop car go by, so it's like, probably not a good idea. I don't want to get arrested. Uh, especially because I'm cold and want to go back to school so I can actually do my homework. As ridiculous as that sounds. But it's like, um... But, like, as far as it went, it's like, alright, don't ride with this guy ever again. Luckily, I had a friend who had uh, gotten caught for drag racing a couple months prior. And weirdly enough... The moment this guy caught cop for dry, drag racing, his ability to drive just miraculously went from like, all right, kind of risky, kind of fast, to safest man on the planet. He also had an incredibly safe car, so it's like, all right, well, I have my uh, designated chauffeur. Um, but so, uh, eventually, I, I don't remember what I did, but I ended up riding with the guy one more time after the drifting incident, and... There's one thing I hate more than, like, people that, like, go too fast or drive kind of erratically or whatever. As people that, uh, text while driving. Uh, as a pedestrian, as a biker, I'm, I'm actually really afraid of, like, other people driving. Because it's not uncommon. Well, actually, no. I have been hit by a car before. It's rare. As a pedestrian. Um, but I used to work as a, as a, uh, as a cart monkey at a grocery store. And so... I was, I was just, you know, pushing carts. Suddenly, I'm, uh, I'm on my ass because some person just decided, ah, you know what, I can, I can get out of here be before the guy with all of the carts, uh, gets by, and all, of, you know, uh, she didn't almost make it, I almost made it past her before she managed to pull out. However, <clears throat> so all of the carts cleared, I didn't, so I, I ended up, uh, with the car backing into me. Not super painful, but, um, uh, unfortunately, she couldn't back up anymore, and I, I'm not entirely sure if, if this lady, uh, there's just not a whole lot to, like, tell about this story, apart from, like, random lady decided to back up, but I, if it weren't for my carts doing damage to her, oh, shit, uh, carts doing damage to her car, I'm not entirely sure what she would have done, 
But like, you know, there's the clatter from the carts. It's like, all right, she stops. Uh, cause I, I definitely wasn't, uh, aware enough of like what was going on. I just fell over and it's like, all right, why am I on the ground? Oh, car. Um, so like, I was not aware enough to like shout, you know, don't run me over or anything like that. Um, but the, the carts falling over was definitely enough. Uh, not to mention like, if you ever, if you ever get the chance to see what a, uh, grocery cart can do to the undercarriage of a car, it both ain't pretty and also is really funny to see, uh, oh, hey, I got another wind leaf. Uh, it's really funny to see when some idiot decides to actually uh, try running one of those things over. It does a lot of damage. If, you know, they get on top of it. Usually it just kind of scratches up the outside and rolls away. It really depends. But so, um... So, I, like, I, I've physically been hit by a car before, and so, like, I am just baseline afraid of other people texting while driving. Now, if I'm in a car with a person and they're texting while driving, it pretty much just signifies I'm not friends with them anymore. I I can't, in good conscience, generally deal with um, somebody that would do like something that stupid. It's like, all right, there's something seriously wrong with you. Now, this actually factors back into the relationship thing that I was talking about earlier, because the only person this guy ever texted, as far as any of us could tell, was this girl. So. This girl effectively uh, ended my friendship with this guy, even though it was the guy's own damn fault. But we were in stop-go, like, super, actually hairy traffic. Like, it was bad to begin with. I would have been concerned even without the texting while driving. Well, we don't want to get that, because they haven't patched that that much yet. Um, okay. Um, but so, dude is texting while driving, and I'm like, you know, hey man, you almost hit that car. Can you stop texting while driving? Guy turns at me, uh, looks at me, says no again. Sh totally should have learned my lesson the first time with this guy, that he just did not give a shit. And there are other people in the car, so I like turn to them and it's like, you know, hey, help me out here. And the other person just turns away. And it's, it was just one of the most singular depressing moments of my life where, you know, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't have to... I don't have to be upset about this. I, I can just kind of ignore it or whatever. But it was just, it was really sad finding out that like two of my friends, ooh, like the first friend was just a jackass, all right. The second one just did not want to rock the boat at all. And that to me is almost sadder in a way. And you know, I've since not talked to either of these guys. Um, but just the fact that like nobody's willing to rock the boat despite whatever's going on was really sad to me and it was like I can see why like somebody wouldn't want to like piss anybody else off by like sticking up for somebody else especially when it's amongst two uh two like acquaintances but at the same time it was like it, it was only like three more minutes so it's like all right this isn't even torture it's just like how do you how do you as a person see somebody else who's like actually having a panic attack. Like, I don't have panic attacks easy, but being stuck with a, like, I was actually weighing my options of just hopping out of the car while we were going a good 20, 30 miles an hour. Um, I, I was seriously considering it was probably going to be safer, at least for me on a, like a mental basis. Of course, you know, that's the really stupid thing to do and don't do it, but that's what I was considering at the time. Um, but like just, Okay, Tesla coil, not burst fire. I was gonna get really sad if it was burst fire. Holy shit, saw blades are plenty. Um, uh, uh, I guess I was just mostly sad for like the death of two friendships and one, uh, one event. Cause immediately after we like got out of the car, I I followed the guy driving, being like, you know, this isn't okay. I seriously don't like uh, dealing. Like I don't like being in a car with. Uh, somebody that's driving erratically and like you totally could have just waited and like that that girl doesn't even care if you're texting her like she's not gonna date you I didn't say this this is all like not even implied this is all just like he knows it by this point and I don't think he said a word to me we actually made it back to the guy's room before he said anything to me effectively saying I don't care and wasn't listening to a word you said and it's just like holy shit like just on some, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna say like 
I like saying on some baseline level, but like just the just the sheer I don't give a fuck of saying that to anybody you know. I, I can't even fathom like how I would say that to anybody unless they had like just killed my brother or parent parental unit or somebody else. It, really that actually like uh, unless a friend I knew specifically had just like flat out murdered somebody and was asking for my help. I don't think I would ever be physically capable or emotionally capable or psychologically capable of turning away anybody like that. And it's just like, I don't even know. It was just, it was weird. And it still bothers me, actually. It was part of the reason why RantBot is even going about this. It's like StoryBot mixed with RantBot, but it's just like, seriously, how do you do that? And I, I think the problem is, I, I think a lot of the problems that I have with like these issues, quote unquote, is that 90% of them are like just totally will never get resolved because there's no way to. Like for this guy, he's never going to learn. He's never going to be a good person. So it's just like, all right. So I will never learn that this guy has any re any remorse for effectively just throwing away a friendship in favor of being able to text while, text while driving. Uh, it's just interesting. And like weirdly depressing. I'm like, I... I I, I say interesting in like a, a way of like just I think about it I think about it for a while and like it no longer upsets me to the point where it's just like wow I feel shitty it's just mostly like huh I can't believe that like even happened that like somebody would do that anyway uh, people are asking for D&D &D stories let's switch over to that uh, D and D stories. So unfortunately, a lot of my D and D stories are specifically from um, from like when I was super young. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of like good D and D stories that I can tell. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I was like super young when I played most of most D and D. Um. So like, shoot. Oh, you know what? You know it is good. Okay. So there there is actually uh. A sort of interesting D&D. It's not a story so much as, um... Uh... So, one of one of my friend's favorite things to do... Or it was more of my brother's friends. Usually I was kind of the tag-along as far as D&D goes, because, uh, if my, like, bemoaning about, like, bad friendships in high school and college gave any indication, I really didn't have a whole lot of people to play D&D with. Um... So... Uh... As far as, like, playing D&D went, it was always with my brother's friends. Alright, no big deal. Uh, they're pretty cool, save for the one guy that, like, would constantly try and just murder people. Oh well, no big deal. I don't even know what, uh, I don't even know what Chad is talking about at this point. I, I honestly, it's, it's chaos in there. Maybe I'll hire a moderator, but then maybe sanity will be restored, and then what will I be able to glance at and just be super confused by? Anyway, um, wow, I am fairly coherent for somebody that's running on like two hours of sleep um god damn these are massive um but so one of the one of the things we would do in D, D is it was called insane campaigns and all right you know i'll bite what is an insane campaign i, I think that's actually what i said when uh they're proposing it but effectively what would happen in an insane campaign is everybody would get the ability to pick one extra power that like didn't need to make sense uh, so I think they eventually forced me to just have infinite metagame knowledge which is actually really funny as well because um, ima imagine if like you're playing Mass Effect and Shepard becomes self-aware that he's part of a video game and, like, finds a strategy guide and is like, all right, I know exactly where we need to go next. And everybody else is just like, what? And then he just goes up and, uh, he, uh, I don't know, shoots, uh, what's his face? Uh, dickbag. The, the Turian, the Turian guy. I don't even know. Um, so that's, that's effectively what my character was. So every single time we would ever, we would ever play and be, like, faced with a challenge... Um, I would ask the DM a bunch of, like, clarifying questions that, like, you know, the, the character wouldn't know. And 
the DM would like get really wrapped up in the storytelling, so he'd be like, "Oh man, you know, yeah, I can tell you the backstory in this." And then you realize who he's, uh, who he was telling it to. So eventually, anytime I ever asked a question to DM, he would actually just clam up and not tell me anything. So then it became everybody else in the party's goal to feed me information to the point where, at one point, they actually convinced the DM that I would leave the room so I could not overhear the important plot information. Uh that, you know, nobody would know yet. Um. And so, every every time we, like, run into dialogue where it's like, you know, this character's clearly evil, but you have no proof, I'm like, ah, but check check his backpack. And it's like, alright, this, this becomes boring. But at the same time, that was kind of the point of everything. You were supposed to adapt to the fact that everything was weird and broken. Um. But so... It usually just resulted in like some weird stuff. I think that's where the uh, that's where the corpse bag originally uh, originated. And for those of you that have not seen any of my Torchlight series, I had a uh, necromancer that had just an, a very large bag of holding filled with corpses, infinite corpses. It was great. Uh, I should probably leave, not because we need to, but because we have no reason to stay. Um, but so. So I, I had infinite metagame knowledge, and they, they forced that on me because I would, I would like, um, oh right, my character actually had like knowledge skills and stuff like that, and like, I would just roll things, and it wouldn't even make sense how I would know like, why this character has like, a sordid backstory. Uh, but my character would just like, instinctively know, it's like, this character was mentally scarred as a kid by this thing, I just threw a key at a eyeball stack, and it, it already had one. It looks really stupid when you chuck a key at them. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, but so that was my power. And like after a while it stopped being super powerful, so eventually I got to switch over to other stuff. Um, and usually I was trying to like figure out ways to break the game again, but it didn't work as well. Um, I think at some point somebody... Oh, right. Uh, actually, he's he's been on the show. I don't think he watches, but I, I think at one point he actually ended up with infinite metagame knowledge. It wasn't... It's not nearly as effective... Uh, when the person asking for infinite me metagame knowledge is not paying attention to the game. So, uh, uh, Joel, who... Oh, shoot. I lost my key somehow. Okay. Uh, Joel, who's on the show for, at the very least, a uh, couple of episodes of this, that, and the other thing. Crawl, specifically. Uh, I think he had infinite metagame knowledge for, like, a grand total of one run. It's like, alright, wow. They're even bigger now. This is insane. How many clumps of iron do I have? 10. Holy shit. I think that's a record. Um. No, Wolfie, you did not... You did not miss... Uh, you did... Uh, you did not miss a Isaac run. I'll do Isaac after I die here. Unfortunately, we are an absolute tank. I have less health than the last run, though. I guess I don't have a whole lot of, like, life. Steal whatever. I'm racing to see if I can get to cycle 2. I doubt it. We're taking a lot of damage here. Bosses die faster, though. So there is that. Um...